All right, guys, get ready for this. This is 100% the most ridiculous part of his video and easily the most insane thing I've ever had to cover on this channel. Hey, what is going on, guys? We have a huge debunk to get through today, and it is once again covering Jake Tran's new channel, Evil Food Supply. By the end of this video, you're gonna come to the conclusion that I came to, which is that this is probably one of the worst videos I've ever had to cover in terms of blatant misinformation. In case you're not aware, I have responded to him already on his video concerning plant-based meat being a scam. The video was full of deceitful footage, evidence of Jake not reading his own sources properly, citing sources that don't even apply to the claims he's making, preclinical animal data, fear-mongering over specific ingredients in plant-based meat without talking about dosage, and more. I'll have that video linked in the pinned comment. And just two more things I wanna say before we get on with this video, a big shout out and thank you to Beans, who helped me with my What I've Learned debunk, who also helped me with this one, definitely go subscribe to him. His socials will be linked below. And the second thing I want to say is that if you guys are unaware, these debunk videos that I've been doing lately take up a significant amount of my time. So there's the more support I can get for the channel through Patreon and donations and such, the more I can commit to these types of videos. You'll see after this video just how much time it takes to, you know, break down and dismantle some of the insanity in these very well edited videos that look so professional yet have such insane amounts of misinformation. So if you end up watching this video and you appreciate you know, what you see and you wanna help support the channel, please click the link in the pinned comment and consider supporting on Patreon. And now on to his video. The video we're gonna be responding to today is titled, Oat Milk is Literally a Scam. So it's very similar format wise to his previous video we covered, plant-based meats are literally a scam. He does many of the same awful things he did it in that video, in this video, and more. Let's get right to it. Oat milk is literally a scam. Let me explain. When the Swedish company Oatly launched oat milk in America back in 2016, it was presented as the coolest, sexiest, hottest new milk on the block. A plant-based lifestyle is for everyone and anyone. It's not just for hipsters. Not a hipster. According to Oatly, oat milk is healthier than cow's milk. You see, a plant-based lifestyle is not about who, it's about why. And anyone can eat plant-based if they feel like being more sustainable and helping the planet out. Anyone? That's right, Al. Anyone. And that if you bought their overpriced oat water, you would reduce your carbon footprint by 73%. So, obviously, everyone bought in. I mean, why not? It looks like milk. It tastes like milk. It foams up in lattes like milk. And according to them, it's even better than real milk. When in reality, oats plus water alone tastes horrible. So to get commercial oat milk to taste as good as it does, these companies jam a ton of seed oils and chemicals into it, like dipotassium phosphate, a food additive that has been linked to kidney disease and early death. So we have the first ingredient in the video that Jake is deciding to fearmonger about without talking about dosage and health outcomes. When I went to his description to find any sources for the claims he made, this is what I found. So he made a claim without citing a source. Amazing. With some digging, I did manage to find one of his primary sources for this video, and it was just a blog article which even mentions that the FDA generally recognizes phosphates as safe, but then discredits this by saying that the FDA didn't recognize artificial trans fats as unsafe until 2015. Well, just to be clear, speculating about something being unsafe because the FDA is calling it safe but has, you know, gotten things wrong in the past is not an indicator that the ingredient in question is unsafe. We need health outcome data, which Jake and the author of this article did not provide. He mentions dipotassium phosphate again later in his video, so once we get there, we'll cover it extremely in depth. Oh, and in case you're wondering and I predicted at this point, Jake cites zero health outcome data involving the consumption of oat milk and oatly in this video, just like he didn't in his video talking about plant-based meats being a scam. Amazing. Rapeseed oil, aka canola oil, which is a seed oil. All right, so just like he did in his video on plant-based meat, he is fear-mongering about these seed oils in oat milk. To save time, as per usual, I'm just gonna point you to Nutrivore's extremely comprehensive article, which actually cites sources on the effects of seed oils. Also, if you're terrified of seed oils, Oatly offers a low-fat version of their product, which doesn't contain any oil whatsoever. Why Jake didn't mention this? 
I don't know. And then there's maltose, a sugar whose glycemic load is double that of white sugar. Oh man, this is just embarrassing. While trying to discuss the glycemic load of maltose and compare it to the glycemic load of table sugar, he shows a chart covering glycemic index, not glycemic load. Apparently, Jake thinks that glycemic index and glycemic load are the same thing. In fact, one serving of oat milk has the same blood sugar effect as a can of Coke. And first off, it should be mentioned that a serving of oat milk is eight ounces, not 12 ounces. So that's the first issue with this comparison. And secondly, it appears the person who ran this calculation did not include fiber in their calculation. Here is Mike the Vegan explaining this. All right, so the glycemic load for Oatly is a little bit complicated because not only do you have to find the average glycemic index per gram, taking into account the maltose and the starch carbohydrates, which I just approximated to be the same as oats in terms of glycemic index. And then something that I believe that was not done in the equations in Jeff Knobs article was that he did not subtract fiber. So you're supposed to subtract fiber grams. Okay, here's the equation for glycemic load. Glycemic load equals glycemic index times grams of carbohydrate per the portion you're looking at minus grams of fiber, then divided by 100. Sounds kind of complicated, but we have 105 as the glycemic index for maltose times the seven grams of it in there. And then we have 59 as the glycemic index for the remaining starch times six. There was nine other grams of carbohydrates, but three grams of fiber. So we're left with six, divide that by 100. And the result is roughly 11. And then for Coke, it's simple. It's just 70 times 25 divided by 100, which is 17.5, which is 60% higher. Very notable. Then a 12 ounce serving of Coke, which is what a serving of Coke is, is 27. We're talking about two and a half times higher on a serving per serving basis. See, these oat milk companies don't care about protecting your health. No, oat milk is a marketing ploy. A marketing ploy to make as much money as possible. Alrighty guys. So Jake Tran displays more mind reading abilities like he did in his video on plant-based meat, along with enlightening us of the fact that companies have an interest in making money and will deploy marketing campaigns to do so. Insanely mind-blowing information. Selling oat milk is actually a genius move. Why? Because oats are one of the cheapest crops on the planet. A pound of oats only costs you a mere five cents, and you can turn that five cent pound of oats into 15 liters of oat milk. Add in some water and boom, you have a carton of milk-like liquid that costs you mere pennies to make that you can sell for insanely high margins at the grocery store. Now compare this business model with real milk. All these dairy farmers have to slave away day and night, feeding the cows, milking the cows, taking care of the cows, to the point where their milk costs a dollar and 11 cents per liter to make. And we have more mind blowing information from Jake Tran. It turns out that it's cheaper to grow plants and create milk out of them, as opposed to grow plants feed them to animals, and then create milk out of the animals. Just more unbelievable, mind-blowing information. Thank you so much, Jake Tran. And here's a small clip from Beans demonstrating how Oatly hasn't had a net profit since 2019. Yet here Jake is trying to depict Oatly as a profit-generating machine. Gotta love how Jake Tran characterized what dairy farmers do to cows as taking care of them. All these dairy farmers have to slave away day and night, feeding the cows, milking the cows, taking care of the cows. Perpetually cows so they can continue to make milk for us, separating mother cows from their babies, and killing cows when they're no longer producing milk at a cost-effective rate sounds very caring. So much care. The next thing you need to make your fake milk just as rich and creamy as cow's milk is some fat but not just any kind of fat. You need the cheapest fat you can find, like Expeller Press Canola Oil. On the Oatly carton, you'll see this labeled as rapeseed oil, which is the actual name for canola oil. Yes, it's actually called rapeseed. And the thing about canola oil is that it contains trans fats. And the thing about trans fats is that they're not like real fats that are found in nature. No, trans fats are an artificial man-made fat that is created during the oil manufacturing process. And needless to say, these artificial trans fats are an abomination for your health. Alzheimer disease, heart disease, breast cancer, colon cancer, diabetes, you name it, trans fats play a role. All right, first of all, 
Jake Tran claims that trans fats are not found in nature. This is just a false claim. While they are often artificially manufactured, trans fats do occur in nature coming from ruminant animals. Secondly, he is so concerned about trans fat in canola oil when one cup of canola oil contains 0.9 grams of trans fats, while a cup of whole milk contains 0.3 grams of trans fats. And obviously one cup of oatly is not one third canola oil. Let's run some calculations just so you can really understand how ridiculous Jake Tran is being here. According to Oatly, 2% or less of their oat milk is comprised of canola oil. So let's say that 2% of Oatly is canola oil. In one cup of Oatly, we can assume it contains 0.02 cups of canola oil. The amount of trans fat in 0.02 cups of canola oil is so low that it shows up as zero grams of trans fat. So we're gonna have to actually work with higher amounts of Oatly. Let's compare the trans fat in 10 cups of Oatly to one cup of cow's milk. We can assume 10 cups of Oatly will contain 0.2 cups of canola oil because again, 2% of Oatly is canola oil. So get this. 0.2 cups of canola oil contains 0.2 grams of trans fat, whereas one cup of reduced fat cow's milk or 2% milk contains 0.2 grams of trans fat. So Jake is concerned about the trans fat in Oatly and is suggesting we consume cow's milk instead when one cup of cow's milk has the same amount of trans fat as 10 cups of Oatly. Amazing. And keep in mind, we use 2% milk here. Whole cow's milk contains 0.3 grams of trans fat per cup. So it's even worse in this case. One cup of whole milk contains more trans fat than 10 cups of Oatly. Amazing. And let's take this even farther. Let's pretend Oatly was 20% canola oil, which would obviously be undrinkable, instead of 2% canola oil. In this case, one cup of Oatly contains 0.2 cups of canola oil, which equates to 0.2 grams of trans fat. This would still be less than the 0.3 grams of trans fat in one cup of whole cow's milk. So with all of this considered, if Jake Tran is concerned about trans fats and milk, he should be avoiding cow's milk, not oat milk. And even though trans fats were banned by the FDA in 2015, they still allowed food companies to include 0.5 grams per serving while still being able to put the label zero grams of trans fats on the packaging. We have all these products that have up to 10% trans fats. They're riddled with this nasty stuff and they still get to put a big fat zero on the package. All right, so this is very weird. Jake shows somebody in his video saying that 10% of trans fats can be put at zero after saying the max limit you can label an item zero grams of trans fat is at 0.5 grams. Then he shows a nutrition label where the total fat is nine grams. 10% of nine grams would be 0.9 grams. It would hence have to be considered one gram of trans fat according to what he said earlier about the FDA making it so that any amount of trans fat above 0.5 grams should be labeled. And if you look at the FDA website, they say trans fat content must be expressed as grams per serving to the nearest 0.5 to a gram increment below five grams and to the nearest gram above five grams. So why would he show this specific label after somebody said that 10% trans fat can be labeled as zero when 10% trans fat of the nine grams of fat he showed would be above the 0.5 threshold and therefore one gram of trans fat. This is just another example of Jake Tran just not thinking about putting images on the screen that are supposed to correspond with what's being said in the video. The first time was when he showed a chart going over glycemic index when trying to talk about glycemic load. And guess what else is in canola oil? Aldehydes, a toxin found in oxidized seed oil that has been shown to raise cancer risk exponentially. All right, so no evidence is provided for this claim and I couldn't find any evidence in the article I tracked on earlier that he was citing for his video and it's not totally clear which aldehyde he is referring to aldehyde is a general chemical group milk has aldehydes too is he now going to avoid milk is milk now a scam because there's aldehydes in it this paper highlights just how ridiculous the statement aldehydes are toxic really is it says evidence of carcinogenic potential in experimental animals is convincing for, and then it names a bunch of different types of aldehyde. Which aldehyde are you talking about? And straight from the same paper, from epidemiological studies, there was no convincing evidence of aldehyde exposure being related to cancer in humans. Overall assessment of the cancer risk of aldehydes in diet leads to the conclusion that formaldehyde, acrolyne, citral, and vanilla are no dietary risk factors. Whoa, look at that. Sources being provided for my claims? Wild stuff here, guys. But you're gonna need more than just canola oil to bring your oat milk recipe to cow milk standards. You'll also need an emulsifier, like dipotassium phosphate. Emulsifiers are what actually allow the water and seed oils in your concoction to mix. And dipotassium phosphate is an emulsifier that was originally derived from urine and animal bones that will cause your oat milk to foam up like a dream. That way, baristas will become obsessed with it. 
Never mind that phosphate additives have been linked to chronic kidney disease, calcium deposits in the arteries, and higher rates of heart attacks in young men. Alrighty. So his claims about phosphate additives come from this article, which cites this paper, which refers to phosphate levels in patients with chronic kidney disease. All this tells us is that people with chronic kidney disease should avoid a diet with high amounts of phosphate additives. This is also the case with protein intake in people with chronic kidney disease. Does this mean that Jake also thinks we shouldn't drink cow's milk because it's high in protein? And there's a very specific demographic of people who should be consuming a lower protein diet? Of course not. If we look at this paper on chronic kidney disease recommendations, it even says dietary phosphate load is closely related to protein content. As noted above, using plant sources of protein may be beneficial for controlling phosphorus load. Plant sources have the lowest bioavailability of phosphorus with grains yielding only 50% bioavailability of phosphorus. And it even says that the available literature does not provide evidence that dietary phosphorus restriction results in a serum phosphorus level reduction in non-dialysis chronic kidney disease populations. So Jake is using the dietary needs of a very specific subset of the population, people with chronic kidney disease who are on dialysis, to generalize phosphate additives as bad to the public. Again, not even just people with chronic kidney disease, people with chronic kidney disease who require dialysis. Again, we can do this with protein too. Does Jake now think he should be consuming plant milks over cow milks because a subset of people would benefit from having less protein in their diet along with plant protein over animal protein. I guess high protein animal products are a scam because people with chronic kidney disease who require dialysis have to have lower protein intake. Amazing. There's just one ingredient left a marketing campaign to dupe the masses. No matter how good your artificial milk tastes, if you don't have the right marketing, none of that is gonna matter. The food industry is competitive. Shelf space is competitive. So not only do you need to somehow convince the masses that drinking this chemical concoction is good for you, you also have to convince them that drinking oat milk is cool. So you need to find a way to create a cult following. And here's how you're gonna do it. Step one. Hire a bunch of artists, writers, and marketing experts to help run Oatly's Department of Mind Control. Step two, cover every major city with Oatly propaganda. All right, hold up. Why is this part of the video being made on Oatly and not the dairy industry. Oatly's market cap as of 2023 is 1.04 billion. Dairy ad spendings per year are 370 million. Every year, the dairy industry spends about half of Oatly's entire net worth on propaganda. Oatly spent less than $100 million in the past year. Not to mention that Jake is depicting Oatly's advertising campaign as propaganda. What exactly is the Got Milk campaign? Dairy also spends four times as much as Oatly on just two of their largest advertising programs. And you are putting these claims against cow's milk everywhere commercials, print ads, even right on the carton. And the dairy farmers? Yeah, they weren't too happy about this. And what do huge corporations do when they're not happy? They whip out the lawyers. In 2015, the Swedish Dairy Board sued you for slandering cow's milk in your commercials. And in the end, they won. You had to pay around $100,000 for the damage you caused to their milk sales. And eventually, a law was passed in Europe that made it illegal for any company to call plant-based milk, milk. You had to call it drink or milk with a Y. But did this stop you from pushing your chemical soup to the masses? No, it actually just made you more determined. You published legal documents from your dairy board trial on your website, and you made commercials that framed the dairy board as a bully, and you the poor, innocent victim. And this actually made you more popular than you were before. The public started seeing you as human, as the little guy, someone they could relate to. It was honestly a genius marketing strategy. How insane is it that Jake Strand is depicting Oatly as the bully when in this situation, it was the dairy industry that was trying to stop all plant milk companies who are much lower than them from being able to call their milks milk. And just wait till we get to the next thing in this video. It's probably the worst thing I've ever had to cover. And when I cover it, I want you to think about how Jake Tran depicts himself as somebody who is opposed to propaganda and, you know, false claims. In 2021, the UK's Advertising Standards Authority accused Oatly of making false claims about carbon emissions and discovered that they only consulted just one climate person to get their 73% figure. And researchers like Jane Buxton 
found that dairy milk actually produces only one third of the carbon emissions that oat milk does. So the whole idea that you're going to save the environment by drinking processed oat water is just a flat out lie. All right, guys, get ready for this. This is 100% the most ridiculous part of his video and easily the most insane thing I've ever had to cover on this channel. Jake criticizes Oatly for consulting only one climate expert to get their estimate for 73% less emissions versus dairy milk. And then goes on to cite Jane Bruxton, an author, not a climate expert or researcher. He refers to her as a researcher, as though she is a climate researcher, when she is just an author. So he takes issue with Oatly consulting one climate expert and then goes on to cite somebody who he depicts as an expert or a researcher who isn't one. But wait, it gets worse. He didn't even represent Jane's quote accurately. I found her claim in an article written by a farmer and it is adjusted for micronutrients. The claim comes from her book, The Great Plant-Based Con, which says that when the metric used is carbon per micronutrient content, the footprint of dairy milk is less than one third of that of oat milk. Jake just claimed that the cows generate one third of the emissions of oat milk. He makes no mention of an adjustment for micronutrient content. And if we go with Jake's misrepresentation of Jane's claim, we actually find that the opposite it is true when we look at the results from the largest meta-analysis of food systems to date. But hold up, it gets even worse. I went ahead and looked at her book to try and find a citation for this claim about cow's milk, oat milk, and emissions. When I checked the citation for the claim, it's literally just an interview with some dude named Joe Stanley, who is just an animal farmer. So wait a minute, let's really understand what's going on here. Jake Tran criticizes Oatly for consulting with one climate expert for their emissions claim, and then it goes on to misrepresent a claim quote from an author who he also misrepresents as a researcher. And the quote is from an article written by a farmer about a book written by a journalist whose original source for this claim is from an interview with another farmer. What seems more credible? A singular climate expert or a quote from an article written by a farmer referring to a quote from a book by a journalist that was given by another farmer. You really cannot make this shit up, guys. Next time I need information about the climate, instead of consulting with an actual climate expert, I'm going to use an animal farmer's article talking about a journalist who talks about an interview she did with another animal farmer. Sounds credible. Now, you may be wondering, well, okay, evil food supply, oat milk is obviously terrible, but the other nut milks can't be that bad now, can they? Like, what about almond milk? Well, sorry to say this, all these milk alternatives are pretty much the same. It's all just water, the nut of your choice, and the same long list of toxic ingredients. Seed oils, emulsifiers, and lots and lots of other food additives. And sometimes, there's barely even a sprinkle of real food in these milk substitutes. There's basically no almonds in the almond milk in your fridge right now. So if there's no almonds in my almond milk, what's in there? Well, it's mostly water, emulsifiers, gums, and oil. If you pour an eight ounce cup of almond milk like this, there's about five almonds in that cup. And in this whole carton, it's only about 2% almond. All right, so here he cites Bobby Parrish. This is a guy who asks pregnant women to skip their oral glucose tolerance test, despite having no medical qualification or clue why we test pregnant women for their oral glucose tolerance in the first place. I've been wearing this glucose monitor for the last 30 days, and I want to see how juices affect my blood sugar. Now, we all know that Bobby regularly spouts absolute garbage. And once again, he's fear-mongering over a perfectly normal blood glucose response. And yet, this isn't even the crazy thing about this video. Time school. Now, this is why getting your health advice from uneducated and unqualified charlatans can cause genuine harm. Somebody posted in his comments, I'm currently pregnant and asked my midwife if she'd allow any alternative to the glucose drink for the gestational diabetes test. She said that naked juices have 50 grams of sugar and that would be an approved alternative. To which he replied, skip that test, it's insane. So Bobby, the self-certified health expert with no relevant medical or nutritional training at all, is telling a pregnant woman to skip the oral glucose tolerance test. And you might ask, well, why is this dangerous? Well, gestational diabetes can cause major problems for the mother and child during the pregnancy and after birth. For example, this meta-analysis of over 7.5 million pregnancies found that women with gestational diabetes had an increased risk of preterm delivery, macrosomia where the baby is abnormally large, as well as respiratory distress syndrome, neonatal jaundice, and an increased risk of being admitted to the ICU. But with early detection, like with an oral glucose tolerance test, this can be managed effectively. And this is why it's offered to all mothers who are at a high risk of gestational diabetes. 
But he doesn't know this because, surprise, surprise, he's not medically qualified and he thinks he knows more than he actually does. Do yourself a favor and ignore every one of his videos. Class of mist. Towards the end, he criticizes other plant milks as being mostly water, as though we're not talking about drinks and beverages, which are always mostly water. Cow's milk is also mostly water. What are you saying? All right, guys, that's the end of the video. Again, this video took a lot of time to put together. I deeply appreciate any support you guys can give through Patreon or even the, you know, special thanks feature where you can send a donation in the comments. Anything is appreciated. And of course, signing up to Patreon gives you early access to my work. It supports the channel, obviously. And with it, you can message me one-on-one -on, -one on Patreon. And if you don't know, I do have a book going over most, if not all, of the anti-vegan arguments you're gonna hear online. If you wanna get that as well, that'll be linked in the pinned comment. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Dude, fuck off, I don't want anything to do with you. Don't don't ever speak to me again. You're a fucking piece of shit. Even vegans don't get your weird, stupid, wannabe sense of irony here. Who is your audience? Nobody gets these dumb jokes. Dude, 